Mr. Rakitwang was seen by a team of four doctors on 19 February 2021. Who all, who all participated in the medical report and appended their signatures to the same report? For the mental examination, they had the following to say, and I quote, the patient was kept and showed no abnormal and showed no abnormal mannerisms. He was calm and showed no restlessness. Rapport was easily established. He maintained eye contact through the examination. His speech was normal in volume, tone and rate. His mood was low and his affect flat. His thoughts were logical and coherent. He had no delusional thoughts. He had no disturbances in perception and had insight into his condition. The report was done at the behest of the court, which had watched the demeanor of accused one all through the 10 witnesses. And at that time, the report was required for the best interest of accused one. The reports submitted to the court today by Dr. Ramin were respectively were reports made outside the realm of the trial. The court insists on this matter. No permission was sought from the court for the parties to obtain evidence for the court to consider. This is basic practice, unless it's an emergency beyond the control of the parties, which is only but human. No permission was sought and no emergency has been demonstrated so far in order to demonstrate the private acquisition of medical reports. Trials are controlled proceedings. Anything done is bound to anything done that is bound to affect the trial or its outcome must be done with blessings of the court unless it's an emergency. Section 162, Capital 5 is very clear on the process to be followed when the court observes that accused cannot follow proceedings. It's an elaborate procedure that has to start in court. Both reports presented to court today contradict the report from the Kenyatta National Hospital. In any case, if the condition of A1 had changed, the defense should have sought for permission to seek a further report from the same doctors who in the eyes of the opinion of the court are independent and did their report knowing that accused one had been admitted at the Nairobi hospital. Their reports that are dated 4th and 11th March respectively come two weeks and three weeks after the report from the Kenyatta National Hospital. What the court is saying in brief is that it must be respected. Dr. Camino asked for a date far away and had a director that the governor will only attend him available. Further, as I quoted him above, earlier here in above, as I quoted him earlier here in above, and according to him, the defense does not mind this case coming up for hearing after 10 years. No reasonable tribunal can allow the above practice to take place at it will at it as it will be unfortunate and will erode the legal gains made under the constitution and procedural law on guidelines on fair trial and active management guidelines published by legal notice number 1340 of 2016. Consequently from what has been outlined above, the court has come to the conclusion that no sufficient material has been placed before it to convince it that accused one is unable to attend court. That being the case, it's here directed, it's hereby directed that accused one attend trial tomorrow, 16th March 2021 at 10 a.m. without fail. Failure to attend court will have consequences. Let's sit down the same. Ah, you want to? I'm talking. Okay. Okay.
I work as a defense team, often the general practitioner. We normally attend some few matters to the high court here and there and so on. We wonder whether it would be kind enough to exchange 10 of or 11 of the that we fair. 11 of to enable us to hear some high court matters and so on. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, you don't know. You should come. We have a number of matters which we attend to virtually.